Welcome back to Loyal TV. Let's hit the road for T-Town, Tulsa, Oklahoma, home to music hit makers and a history-making church turned rock and roll landmark. If you found yourself walking through Tulsa's Pearl District in the 1970s, it wasn't uncommon to spot George Harrison, Tom Petty, or Bob Dylan deep in conversation, sitting on the steps, causing a little commotion, or grabbing a bite at the cafe across the street. What drew them there? It was Leon Russell and his legendary church studio, the epicenter of the Tulsa Sound. So the church studio actually started out as a church. It was built in 1915 when Oklahoma was a brand new state and it was Grace Methodist Episcopal Church. And in 1972, when Leon Russell was the really considered the number one touring artist in America, he came back to his hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he bought this old church, and he turned it into this amazing recording studio and home office to shelter records. And Leon Russell was kind of the musician's musician. He's a singer, he's a songwriter, he's a multi-Grammy award-winning artist. So the church studio in the 1970s was this, it's sort of, we call it the epicenter of the Tulsa Sound, but it was this creative workshop where people could come here, singers, songwriters, artists, producers, instrumentalists, they could come into this beautiful space and just create music. Anyone that was anyone in the music industry descended upon Tulsa during that 1970s time period. A lot of artists such as Tom Petty, Bob Marley, Kansas, Stevie Wonder, Eric Clapton, Bob Dylan, George Harrison, really the list goes on and on. And you have to remember, he came from those more formal studios in California where you had the budget guys and you had the formal engineers, and he wanted something very, very different. And I think that is what inspired the name of his record label, Shelter Records. You know, he wanted to provide that shelter for the artist, again, where they could come together and create beautiful music. It was always about the music. I think anyone that lived in Tulsa in the 70s, they knew about the church studio. Leon Russell was an international star when he came back to his hometown of Tulsa in 1972. So if you ran across someone that had a British accent, you knew they probably worked at the church. And so it was a very exciting time for Tulsans and Oklahomans alike to know that this world-class recording studio was right here in their backyard. By 1976, both the music industry and Leon Russell's own style was evolving. Factors such as the rise of disco music and his own crossover into country led Leon to make the difficult decision to sell the church studio. After a series of owners and a fall into disrepair, the church studio found a new owner and a restored purpose. First and foremost, I'm a huge Leon Russell fan and I've been collecting Leon memorabilia from a young age and just, just so proud of not only Leon Russell, but all of the artists that came out of my hometown. So I was really interested in buying the church studio. I bought it sight unseen, driving by and just seeing the shape that it was in. I originally thought I would just, you know, fix it up, paint it, do some things, put my collection in here, but it really took a life of its own. One of my first goals when I purchased the church was to get it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And that's where that period of significance, 1972 to 1976, is really important. And that's what qualified it to become a national landmark. The church studio was the absolute longest restoration project ever. You know, it had a lot of problems. It had been dilapidated for quite some time. And you have to remember, too, that the church was built in 1915. And even when Leon Russell bought it in the 70s, it was in pretty rough shape. And so it was really important for us to secure the building, structurally speaking. And after being in here and really giving it some thought, I realized that the church studio needs to come back to be in a recording studio. I love the past and I love Tulsa's history and Oklahoma's amazing magical music history, but I wanted to be relevant to today's artist. And so that's why it was really, really important to not just have a museum and a tourist attraction, but to uh, have this incredible recording studio and do exactly what Leon Russell did in the 1970s. 
in the 1970s, you know, as an exclusive recording studio, unless you were on the label or knew someone, it was very, very difficult to get in the doors. So being able to open the church doors open to the general public is very exciting to us. You know, the church was built for the people, by the people. It was very open, no matter who you were. We believe it to be Tulsa's first integrated church. And so when you look at the church's original mantra, it's very, very beautiful. And we did not realize how much the community was so looking forward to our opening. And everyone has been so great. So you have music fans, you have tourists, you have locals, you have church historians that love the history of the Methodist Church that was in here originally. So it's really been amazing and it's been an honor. It's been quite humbling on how much the general public, the Tulsa community has embraced our revival. We like to call it at the church. The doors to the newly renovated and expanded church studio open to the public on March 1st, 2022 to great fanfare. And while the building has been brought into the 21st century, its charm and history are well preserved. In addition to a state-of-the-art recording studio, the new museum holds an impressive archive, hosts events, and offers educational programs through the Church Studio Institute. We don't want to live in the past, but it's so important to honor those musical trailblazers from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and our state of Oklahoma, hopefully to inspire a whole new generation of musicians that come in here and enjoy the attraction, but also possibly record that next big hit coming out of the church studio. The phrase, the Tulsa Sound, began circulating right around the time Leon Russell founded the original church studio, making it an inception point for future Tulsa musical artists. Today, it has a renewed purpose among those who carry on the Tulsa Sound. The Tulsa Sound, to a lot of people, is a combination of rock and roll, of country, of gospel, and blues. But I really think the Tulsa Sound is more of a brotherhood, a sisterhood, where like-minded people can come together and celebrate good music, make good music. I mean, it really is extraordinary the number of artists that have made it to the big time in the music industry came here from Tulsa. Tulsa is really experiencing a renaissance. When you look at all the things that people can do here for a weekend, you know, you have Kane's Ballroom, you have OK Pop Museum, you have the Bob Dylan Center, you have the Woody Guthrie Center, you have the Outsiders House, and you have the church studio now. And so I love how all of those brands and the community, you know, they've really have rallied around what we're doing. And, you know, it's been really great. Thanks for joining us. Come back again for the best Oklahoma stories you've never heard, right here on Loyal TV.